When you're dragging during the day and your energy is low, do you reach for one of the popular energy drinks to give you a boost? Well, with today's stressful lifestyles combined with the lack of quality sleep at night, millions do just that to keep them going. But how safe are these drinks? Here to talk about the hype and the harm is our health expert, Dr. David Friedman. Good morning, doctor. Hey, Christy, good to see you. Energy drink sales in America, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Now, let me start off by saying some of these drinks do have some good energy producing herbs and B vitamins, but most of them, they're just loaded with caffeine and sugar. And Lord knows you and I have talked about caffeine several times several on times. several shows because uh -huh. you know how much I love my cup of the coffee. Java queen. There you go, the Java <laughs> Queen. Cuban coffee, I may add. Uh -huh. But tell me the difference between like the energy drinks compared to sodas and coffee. The average soda has around 30 milligrams of caffeine per can. The average amount of caffeine in a cup of coffee is 60 milligrams. You ready for this? Mm. Energy drinks can have as much as 500 milligrams of caffeine per can. Let me tell you what that is. That's 10 times more caffeine than the average cup of coffee. My goodness. And here's what happens. Excess caffeine takes a major toll on the brain. It lowers a person's immune system, can cause depression. Even high blood pressure has been associated with high caffeine. All big prices to pay for that temporary energy buzz. And really, it's so short-lived. It lasts maybe 30 minutes to an hour. And these drinks are fattening too, right, doctor? Very fattening. I'll tell you why. They can a massive amount of sugar. In fact, one can can be the equivalent of eating a cup of pure sugar. Ooh. And that sugar buzz you get, that's part of the energy buzz that these drinks give you. You kind of go up and then and all then of a sudden you down. crash down. Yes, exactly. Now, regarding the heart, I've heard they're really not good for the heart. Well, if you look at some of the names of these energy drinks, I mean, <laughs> they just don't sound good for the heart. Actually, according to the New York Times article, which was published in May of 2008, they said energy drinks can lead to seizures that require emergency room visits, yet energy drinks, they're very popular among teenagers. They're actually marketed to teens and young adults. You'll even find them sponsoring Winter Olympics, UFC fighting, soccer, BMX, even NFL games. It's true, I've actually seen them. And are they actually legal for American athletes? They are legal, but you know what I say? It's the worst thing an athlete can put into their body, and I'll tell you why. Energy drinks, they cause severe dehydration of the body, where drinks like Gatorade, Powerade, and vitamin water, they actually replenish minerals and water that's lost during activity. So those are the good drinks, not the energy drinks, because here's what also happens. Energy drinks act as a diuretic, so they cause you to lose water. Well, you know, during exercise and sports, that's when the body really needs water, and this situation is has grown so bad that in 2001, France authorities banned the popular energy drink Red Bull when a young basketball player's death was linked to drinking four cans during a game. My goodness, so what type of regulations actually exist? That's the scary part. The FDA does not regulate caffeine content in these energy drinks. Very little research has been done on these drinks. Also, these drinks, they're catered to the young adults. So many bars and clubs, they mix energy drinks with alcohol. Oof. This can be severely harmful. I'll tell you why. There's been reports of people dying from the mixture. According to research published by the Wake Forest University of Medicine, students who consumed alcohol mixed with these energy drinks were twice as likely to be injured, need medical attention, and twice as likely to drive while they're intoxicated. Which is not good at all, my goodness. Not good. Well, what it does is it's the, the stimulant properties of these drinks mask the feeling of intoxication. So what this does is it leads a person to drinking well beyond the safe limit. So are there any safe alternatives? I mean, I've never tried one. I'll be honest. I don't need it personally. I'm no, very you hyper. Don't need it. No, you are. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Friedman, for being so honest to our viewers. But uh, give me an alternative for someone who maybe uh, wants to find somebody one. Somebody that, that wants to get off these energy drinks, I recommend ginseng, uh. liquid B12, and a cup of green tea. They're great healthy alternatives that I recommend. What this does is increases your energy without those dangerous side effects. As always, great information. Thank you, doctor. Now my Cuban coffee, you know I'm going to keep on drinking I know it. you're going to keep drinking that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. And for more information, log on to thebalancingact.com slash ask the doctor. You know I can't. Today's My Health segment brought to you by Choose for Health, the world's first super fruit, sea vegetable, antioxidant, chewable dietary supplement.